For the moment, another stock beckons our attention. The Thomas Cook Board has approved corporate restructuring in order to streamline its businesses into four key verticals. Madhavan Menon, Chairman Manager Director Thomas Cook, is joining us on the phone line. Mr. Menon, good morning. Well, you know, this is a host of announcements. Can you just explain the key aspects of your restructuring exercise? <clears throat> the Thomas Cook Board announced a uh, restructuring of various elements within the Thomas Cook Group in its capacity as a holding company. One of the aspects was uh, to demerge some of the human resources businesses that are sitting in Thomas Cook and merge them into, into uh, Quest. Simultaneously, it was decided that Thomas Cook, uh, which has a holding in Quest, would distribute this holding to its shareholders so the shareholders in Thomas Cook would become the uh, would become direct shareholders in Quest. The ratio of how the Thomas Cook holdings in Quest would be distributed would be five uh, five point two nine shares of Quest for every hundred shares held in Thomas Cook. So that is one aspect. There were various cross holdings that existed within the Thomas Cook travel unit. For example, uh, some of our businesses were held by both SOTC and, and I mean, SOTC and uh, TCI. We are now restructuring those holdings and they will be held directly by Thomas Cook. A third aspect of this exercise is to convert both SOTC and TCI into pure operating companies so as a result, all the real estate holdings have now are being now uh, taken upwards into Thomas Cook. Another aspect of this exercise is that all brands, be it ATI, SOTC, uh, TC Travel, TC Forex, will all now be held by Thomas Cook, um, and there will be an, a license arrangement between the parent and the subsidiaries. Lastly, we are merging two companies uh, which were acquired from Tata Capital, which is TC Forex and TC Travel into Thomas Cook India Limited. Okay, so investors will get 5.29 Quest shares for every 100 shares that they hold in Thomas Cook. Uh, so post the demerger, can you tell us what business remains with the resultant company? So the tour operating, the foreign exchange business, uh, the inbound business will all remain with the travel uh, with the travel vertical of the holding company, Thomas Cook Holding. Now they will sit, they will exist as they do today within Thomas Cook and SOTC and TCI. None of that will change. Okay, the financials. How will the uh, uh, balance sheets and profitability change? revenues are as they stand uh, today uh, there will be no change in the profitability uh, or the uh, revenue or the balance sheet structures of any of these companies in the holding group of the travel holding group so it's important to recognize that the only potential change is that we will take the proportionate profits uh, the, the profits of quest which are proportionate to our holding effective March 31 going forward and till the scheme is concluded after which the uh, uh, quest profits will no longer be reflected in Thomas Cook. So what about the shareholding pattern? Uh, how does uh, that really change post the restructuring? Any change in Thomas Cook's shareholding at all? The promoter shareholding uh, in Thomas Cook does not change. It remains where it is. The indirect shareholding that the promoter Fairfax had a quest will now be a direct holding which will be approximately 33 percent post distribution of the shares uh, and what about sterling holidays the sterling business remains a, uh, a portfolio investment for thomas cook india limited and nothing will change there except the holding the uh, sterling will become a wholly owned subsidiary of thomas cook
Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Madhavan, for joining us. And now for the other side of the story, Subrata Nag, uh, the group CEO of QuestCorp, joins us now to talk about that. Subrata, thanks for joining us. Now that the restructuring is complete, how does life for QuestCorp change? Uh, no, I don't think that life will change. The business will go as usual. Uh, we have very strong tie with uh, Fairfax Group as of now also. I think uh, only their holdings, uh, they were holding uh, through Thomas Cook. So that is will not be there and they will become a direct shareholder. I think it will help us, you know, exploring maybe uh, future opportunities and our you know, in all other other matters, I think it will have a no, more actually, what uh, I was, uh, positive impact. What I was meaning to ask you is, uh, how much of the uh, of Thomas Cook's HR business will you be taking on board, and uh, you know, what would the uh, oh, revenues, okay. the that size is, be? I think I think that is a very uh, not a uh, not a very significant amount of business. Their training and learning business and the tour management business uh, will be coming to us, uh, so, uh, but. Uh, uh, <clears throat> overall revenue and profitability wise it will not make a huge impact uh, you know as far as quest overall business performance is concerned okay wait now let me get your uh, uh, shareholding right now yeah. in the post restructuring world Fairbridge will have 33%, that is 3.1%, yeah. Ajita is at yeah. 12%, Net Resources 10.6%, and that's yeah. the total is 55.7%. So that's promoter yeah, that holding. That's the promoter's, promoter's holding. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, are you expect, have you been speaking to any of the, uh, uh, you know, PE guys? Do they want to increase stake? Uh, are we talking to any PE guys? Yeah. I mean, are you, uh, any, any of the uh, current uh, uh, shareholders? Are they likely to increase their stake? Uh, I think uh, you know we meet lot of share, you know investors and uh, you know there is a lot of interest of our shares among the investors and if there is a, they have an opportunity uh, I think uh, definitely they will look for uh, increasing their stake but uh, I don't have any specific you know proposal or specific discussions going on with anybody. Do you need time. money for expansion? No, I don't think we need money for expansion. If you know that we did an IPP last year and we raised 873 crores, uh, part of that money has already been deployed in uh, various m &A activities, but we are still holding a substantial uh, amount and we are uh, having a, a good cash accrual, internal accrual. So I don't have any immediate need for any cash uh, uh, or going to market for any cash, raising any money. Do you see your margins improve further from this 5% level anytime soon? Yeah, see, if you uh, track our company, if you uh, last few years, every year we have been increasing our margin, you know, a little bit. And I think the current year also, our overall margin, first three quarters, there was a uh, upward trend and that trend will be, uh, you know, remain so. And the new acquisitions, whatever we are doing, I think all are, you know, uh, margin attractive. So I'm sure that overall margin uh, will be increasing in the coming uh, days also. Will you look at scaling up the business, the other business that's now coming to you from Thomas Cook? Uh, you know, we have a, a substantial large training business. Uh, we running almost you know, uh, 80 plus centers in India uh, in the skill development. Uh, so it will add you know, in, uh, into that uh, business and it will open up in the hospitality sector and okay. uh, for us. Okay. But as a overall, I don't see it will have a huge impact on our training business. Okay. okay. We'll leave it at that. Uh, out of time, Subrato, thank you very much for joining us uh, with, your, uh, de with the details of the restructuring this morning. Uh, as we wind down on Bazaar, actually markets have given up a little bit of their gains.